we just were talking about how compounds can be molecular with covalent bonds or ionic with ionic bonds. Elements, most of them are atomic, but a few of them have molecules. So we can classify these things. Here's another you know, flow chart sort of thing. So here's our pure substances. We've got elements and compounds. In an element, all the individual atoms are the same. Um, in an atomic element, we have individual atoms that are not chemically bonded to each other. In a molecular element, we have individual molecules of the element. So oxygen forms molecules of two oxygen atoms together. There are only seven molecular elements that you need to be aware of. We'll talk about that. Compounds can be either molecular or ionic. Molecular compounds are going to have uh, discrete molecules, whereas ionic compounds are going to have just a geometrical arrangement of ions, and it just keeps going and going for whatever the size of the object is. Ionic compounds have ions in them. Molecular compounds have molecules. So most elements exist as single atoms. Sodium, neon, carbon, all of these. Um, the molecular elements exist as molecules, two or more atoms bonded together. So there's seven diatomic elements. So the diatomic elements have molecules of two atoms, diatomic two atom molecules. And these are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Um, there are others like P4 and S8. These are polyatomic because they have many atoms in them and you are not required to know those. You do need to memorize the seven diatomic elements. So if you start at element seven and make a seven, those are diatomic elements. If you took this seven down here, you wouldn't get into trouble because we're never gonna see those two guys in Chem 1A, so it really doesn't matter. So make a seven, starting at number seven. And then, of course, there's hydrogen. He has to be the exception to all the rules. The noble gases are definitely not going to be diatomic elements because they, some of them don't even form compounds. They, they're, they're like the nobility, right? The English royalty and stuff. They're too good for the rest of us, right? They're not going to hang out with anybody. Um, so that's one way to remember it. There's also a mnemonic, which is basically a silly sentence. Um, there's others, but this is the one I use. Horses need oats for clear brown Everything's going so well, eyes. You know, if you can come up with something better, I'd love to hear it. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. The first letter or two of each of those words represents one of the seven diatomic elements. Okay? So this is something that you are expected to know. Molecular compounds are generally two or more covalently bonded nonmetals. We've got examples here. Water is H2O molecules. Dry ice is CO2 molecules. Propane, C3, H8 molecules. So here we have space filling models of the propane, propane molecules. These are individual molecules, kind of like families, I guess you could think of them, 
and, and they go and they travel around, they stay together as a unit. That they don't, you know, break up and reform. Ionic compounds have cations and anions in them. Um, the cations are usually a metal, almost always in Chem 1A. And the anions are usually one or more nonmetals. These ions are stuck together, connected by ionic bonds. Ionic compounds do not have molecules. And so we can't really talk about a molecular formula for an ionic compound because it doesn't have a molecule. What we do is we talk about the formula unit. So essentially, that is an empirical formula. It's the lowest ratio of those ions that together will be charge neutral. So sodium chloride, we've got sodium ions with a positive one charge, chloride ions with a negative one charge, and the smallest combination of those would be one of each to have zero overall charge. You could have two of each or five of each or Avogadro's number of each, right? And it would be the same. We need to have one formula for each compound. And so for ionic compounds, we use um, the formula unit and those, those formulas are always the lowest ratio. So they are empirical formulas. Um, we can also have polyatomic ions. And this is that group of things at the bottom of the list of things to memorize, right? So a lot of ions are just a single atom with a charge, but then there are also groups of atoms bonded together that overall have a charge, and these are called polyatomic, meaning many atoms. So ions with many atoms in them. So an ionic compound such as NaNO3 is going to have sodium ions and nitrate ions. In Chem 1A, all of our ionic compounds are going to have two ions, one kind of cation, one kind of anion. Because there are, there are things that don't do that, but we're not going to talk about them. Okay, so when we look at a formula like this, and we want to figure out what kind of a compound this is, we want to look at the first element and see if it's a metal. Now, you may not think of calcium as a metal because it's in milk and you drink it, right? How could, you're not drinking chunks of metal in your milk, but it's in, it's in the form of an ion. So how do you tell if this is a metal or not? You find it on the periodic table. Calcium's way over on the left. We've got this blue stair step line up there. Everything to the left is a metal. Everything to the right is a nonmetal. For um, compound names and formulas purposes, there are some um, metalloids right on the edge, but they're going to go with their side. Okay. So calcium, and then we've got two nonmetals. So the element calcium, the metal, is one ion, and then everything else together is an ion. Okay, sometimes students want to take this apart and have a calcium ion and a carbon ion and three oxygen ions. It's not like that. KClO. So the first element, oh, that's a metal. That's the first ion. We cover that one up, and everything that's left is going to be the second ion. More on these later. We're going to be learning how to name substances, compounds, and write formulas for them. And the key to being able to do that successfully is to identify what kind of a compound you're dealing with. So this is good practice. It says classify each substance as an atomic element, 
a molecular element, a molecular compound, or an ionic compound. So the first one is fluorine. Well, first of all, is fluorine an element or a compound? It's an element. Most compounds have two words in their name. So when you see something that's just a single name, oftentimes it's going to be an element. There's, of course, exceptions. Water is a compound, but water is special. Okay, so fluorine, this is an element, right? What kind of an element? Atomic or molecular? I heard molecular. That's correct. How do we know that? Horses need oats for clean brown eyes, clear brown eyes. Um, so it's up there in the corner of the seven. N2O, is this an element or a compound? It's a compound because there's two elements. What kind of elements are they? Are they metals or non-metals or what? We've got two non-metals. In order to have ions, you almost always have to have a metal. Here we've got two non-metals. So this is going to be molecular. So this is a molecular compound. because nitrogen wants to be a negative three ion and oxygen wants to be a negative two ion and they're not gonna be able to agree for somebody to be positive. So they're just gonna share instead. How about silver? Element or compound? Element. Molecular or atomic? Well, silver is Ag, right? So oh, it's a it's solid. AG. Oh, Hg is mercury. Hg is mercury. Well, there are seven molecular ones, right? The diatomic ones. There, there's more, but we're going to pretend they don't exist. So if it's not one of the seven, it's atomic. We're trying to keep things relatively simple. Okay, this one, element or compound? Compound, two different elements. Molecular or ionic? Yeah, we have to look at what kind of an element is potassium. It's a metal. Metals make cations, and then we have a non-metal, will make an anion. This is an ionic compound, or ic. How about F Fe2O3? That's a compound. Is iron a metal? No. So it's ionic. Okay. You look at the first element in the in the formula. If it's a metal, it's ionic. Okay? 